I'm Ryan Lagod. And I'm Craig Tovey. Welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagod. And Craig Tovey. Remember, if you like what you see, follow us on Instagram. Or you can go to our website, ryanandcraig.com. Arr, matey. You can watch all of our read-alouds there. Or send us a message. You can say anything. I have something to say. Ryan. I want to give a big shout out to Carrie and the boys from Auburn, Washington. Thank you for sending us today's book. We can't wait to read it. Because today's book is... <gasps> Henry and the Buccaneer Bunnies by Carolyn Crimmy, illustrated by John Manders. Let's get started. Matey? R. R. Which R? It's your choice. You oh. This one. <laughs> Henry and the Buccaneer Bunnies by Carolyn Crimmy, illustrated by John Manders. R. Cruising the seven seas on a rickety old ship called the Salty Carrot sailed a wild, rowdy band of buccaneer bunnies. They were bad, bad bunnies, all right. When pirates on other ships saw their long, floppy ears and their fluffy white tails, they shook with fear. The captain of the Salty Carrot was Barnacle Blackear, the baddest bunny brute of all time. Blackear was proud of his wooden paw, his golden earrings, and his mean reputation. What Black Ear was not proud of was his son, Henry. Instead of performing his proper pirating duties, Henry was more interested in reading the books the Buccaneers stole from other ships. Yeah, there you go. Read some books. Be on the sea. Read your books. Okay, yeah, but there's work to be done on a pirate ship. You gotta swab the decks. You gotta rig the sails. It's like hard labor. You can't just like be reading books in the sun all day. Yeah, but he's like... He's the captain's son, so there's other people that okay. can do that. Yeah, but you don't want to take advantage of that. You gotta be more... Even more subtle about it. How about this? Okay. I'm the captain's son, so I'm not gonna do any work. I'm gonna sit here and read my books. I think you're mistaking subtle for sassy. What's the difference? They both start with an S. Shout shiver me timbers! Black Ear ordered. I'd rather finish this chapter, said Henry. Make this prisoner walk the plank! Can I just read about it? Asked Henry. Find yourself a parrot for your shoulder. First, I need to read up on parrot care, said Henry. Buccaneer bunnies don't need books, said Black Ear. Toss them overboard, he yelled to the other bunnies. No, wait, cried Henry. Let me just finish them first. Avast, cried Black Ear. Swab the decks until you come to your senses. What? He saved the books. But that's the life of the pirate, is that they can get thrown overboard at any time. You gotta be serious, you know? You can swab the decks. Yeah, but, like, he didn't throw them overboard because it's his son. I mean, obviously, he's being shown some favoritism, but you gotta be tactful about it. Totally. Daddy, don't throw away my books, because I'm your son. I'm your son. That was more tacky than tactful. What's the difference? Okay. I'm your son. Okay, that's... Give my books. And so Henry swabbed the decks day after day while reading some of his favorite books like Rabbits and Caruso and 30 Days to Longer Ears. Bet you can't learn how to do this from a book, Jean Leher said while sharpening his hook. Henry sighed and turned the page. You'll never find booty like this in a book, Calico Jack Rabbit told him, holding up his stolen loot. Henry shrugged and turned the page. Can't do this with a book in your paw, Bartholomew Bunny said while sanding his peg leg. Henry just turned another page. As much as he loved his books, Henry was a lonely buccaneer bunny, if ever there was one. Then one morning, he looked up at the red sky and wriggled his little pink nose. He heard the parrot squawk and saw fish jumping out of the water. If my books on meteorology are correct, those signs mean a big storm is heading this way, he thought. Henry tried telling Jean Lahaire about the upcoming storm. Excuse me, but I believe a storm is coming, Henry said. But Jean was too busy polishing his pieces of eight. Back to your books, Henry, he tried telling Calico Jack Rabbit. I'm pretty sure a storm is on its way, Henry said. But Calico Jack was too busy admiring his tattoo of a cabbage. Don't bother me now, Henry. Finally, Henry cried, Batten down the hatches. A huge storm is coming. What do you know about storms? Black Ear demanded. Get back to swabbing the deck before I make shark bait out of those books of yours. Henry did as he was told, but he kept his little pink eyes on the skies. When he saw the rats abandoning ship, he started packing up his books in empty treasure chests. 
Dun 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 Pink eyes Dun 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 All watching Pink eyes are watching for a storm But they're gonna back a book so too Dun 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 Pink eyes Dun 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 All watching Pink eyes are watching for a storm But they're gonna back a book so too Dun 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 Pink eyes Dun 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 The storm started small, a few low grumbles of thunder, a spike of lightning, then suddenly a crashing, bashing, thrashing wildcat of a hurricane broke loose. It shook the ship. Suffering sea dogs! It mangled the masts. Great blimey bilges! It slashed the sails, damaged the deck, and ripped up the rickety old salty carrot. All that was left floating on the choppy waters were a bunch of soggy bunnies and Henry's treasure chests filled with books. When the storm finally calmed down, Black Ear, Henry, and the rest of the buccaneers paddled to the nearest island. We're ruined, wailed Black Ear. No ship, no pieces of eight, no gems. He sat in the sand and blubbered like a lily-livered landlubber. But Henry got to work. Lily-livered landlubber. 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 Lamb-liver. The first thing he did was build a two-story hut out of palm fronds and coconuts. How did ye learn how to do that? asked Black Ear. I read it in 101 Things to Do with Palm Fronds and Coconuts, replied Henry. Next, he built a fire and cooked up a tasty seaweed stew. Blimey, Blimey said the hungry bunnies. Where, Where did, did you learn, learn that? I found the recipe in Quick and Easy Meals for Marooned Pirates, said Henry. Then he made them all fetching garments from the bits and pieces he had salvaged from the shipwreck. We look like gentlemen bunnies, we do. What swank and swashbucklers we are. Ah, and it's all from them land-loving books, said Black Ear, shaking his head. See, Craig, I told you it's good to be the captain's son, because then you get to keep your books and save your mates. Yeah, because as a pirate, you need to know how to survive on an island. Wait, did you just agree with me? No, I'm more acquiescing. What's the difference? Not much. This is a big day. Henry taught Black Ear and the Buccaneer Bunnies all kinds of useful things, like how to plant carrots, make the best sand castles, and build boats out of palm fronds. Soon they built a new ship, which they sailed to the library at the nearby Easter Islands every summer. Here the bunnies spent many happy hours, slurping seaweed stew and reading books. Hey, buccaneer bunnies will always need books, said Black Ear. Henry just smiled and turned the page. Da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. These bunnies da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. are slurping. These, These bunnies, bunnies are slurping seaweed stew and the reading of the books of two. Da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. These bunnies da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. are slurping. These bunnies are slurping seaweed stew and the reading of the books of two. Henry and, and the, the Buccaneer, Buccaneer Bunnies, Bunnies by Carolyn Crimmy, illustrated by John Manders. Arr.